I've seen enough Lightroom catalogs to know that there are a lot of people that struggle to organize. And in this video, I hope that I'm gonna be able to help you to solve that problem. Hey everybody, I'm Austin James Jackson, a professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about organizing your Lightroom catalog in the way that I personally think is best. If you follow these steps, you're gonna avoid missing images, trouble finding certain photos, and just overall headache while navigating your catalog. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and this is just my preferred way. So let me know down below in the comments if you have a different way that you think that works better for you. And of course, if you're serious about improving your photography, be sure to subscribe to my channel at the same time. Now let's not wait any longer. We're gonna be jumping right into Lightroom Classic. Really, really important to note here is that Lightroom doesn't actually hold any of your photos. Uh, you just tell Lightroom where your photos are located. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I import my photos and then how I organize them as well. So I'm gonna kind of show you the whole behind the scenes exactly what's going on. When you're in Lightroom here, after you've imported photos, your photos will lie under the all photographs in the catalog. Um, I usually recommend looking through all photographs when you're looking for a particular photo, if you don't have them already in collections, which I'm gonna show you how to set up collections today. Other thing that I wanna note, there is virtually unlimited ways you could organize your Lightroom. This is how I do it. Uh, if you guys have a way that you like to do it, let me know down below in the comments. I think this is the best way for the kind of photography that I do. Uh, if you do other things like portraits, maybe there might be something better for you, but let me show you exactly how I do it my way. The other thing that I did want to note, if you have a Lightroom catalog where you have like a little box like this, a lot of times it has an exclamation point in it. When you click on it, it'll say that you, uh, the original file cannot be found for this photo. This means that Lightroom doesn't know where that file is anymore because again, Lightroom doesn't hold the photos. Lightroom just holds on to the previews and you tell Lightroom this is where that photo lives. If I wanted to go export this photo right now, I'm not going to be able to, or it's going to be really low resolution because I don't have the original file. When you click on that box, you can see it tells you exactly where that photo was. Uh, right here, you can see it's under volumes, Austin's portable hard drive. So that is just my, my hard drive that I'm using. Uh, my little SSD that's like, uh, I can plug it in any computer. It's in the Lightroom folder under landscape under raw in 2023. And then on August 19th, 2023 folder, this is what it's called. You can click locate. It'll bring you exactly to that folder. You can see it's not in here. I don't know where it is, but I'm going to pull that off of one of my uh, backup drives that I backed up a few months ago. Uh, but just for the sake of this video, I want to show you that's why uh, you don't have those files. So always click this box, read where it is. That will help you to figure out where that file is. A lot of times, like if I didn't have my portable hard drive plugged in, I would know, okay, that's why I can't find the file because my portable hard drive isn't plugged in right now. So know that. Now let's get into how I actually organize my Lightroom catalog here. So let's actually go back to the folders here and I wanna show you on my portable hard drive, let's move this over to list view. Now I've got my portable hard drive here. I have three main folders. I have YouTube where I put my YouTube stuff, Instagram reels, I put Instagram reels stuff there and I have Lightroom. So what I would recommend doing is make a Lightroom folder. I like to do this on a portable hard drive rather than on the internal hard drive of my computer because on the portable hard drive, I can plug that in if I have a second computer or if something goes haywire with my computer, I don't have to worry about my photos. It's really easy to back up. So lots of reasons why I like having a portable hard drive. I'll link the portable hard drive I use down below. I recommend having a Lightroom folder you can double click on the Lightroom folder. Now you want your Lightroom catalog in this folder. I'm actually gonna change this back to icons. Now within this folder, really the only thing you have to worry about is the LR cat, which is the LR catalog. This is your actual Lightroom catalog. You're gonna make sure this is in that folder. Uh, mine is in that folder. This is the old version of the catalog. Everything else, all these data things uh, are automatically created. So don't worry about any of that. Within this Lightroom folder, make sure your catalog is in there. Then I like to have another folder for landscape. Then within that folder, raw. Then I have all of the years. Now, all of these are auto populated. I do not make these myself. I'm going to show you when I import photos, how I make these folders themselves. So don't make these, just make the raw folder, call it a day. Let these auto populate when you import. Now, when I go back here, uh, the first thing I'll show you is how to import photos before I show you how to organize them. When you import photos, click import. You can see I'm going to have some photos up here that are just on my memory card that's plugged in right now. They're going to populate for just a second. Now, when you import, 
I like to build minimal previews, build smart previews, don't import suspected duplicates. I don't make a second copy because I have another way to back up my photos. I don't do any file renaming. I don't apply anything during import. For destination now, this is really, really important. I like to organize by date. I like to use this date format, but you can use any of them that you want. I like to use this one. I click on my portable hard drive. That's where I want the files to go. Now, the work is not done yet. If I do that, it'll just create a new 2023 folder within the Instagram Reels Lightroom and YouTube. But I'm going to click on, I'm sorry, I'm going to click on Lightroom. I'm going to click on Landscape. And I'm going to click on Raw. And then that is it. You will see now with this 2023 folder already created, it says 64 photos are being imported. When I scroll down, you can see these are the dates that the photos are being imported into. So it's creating these folders. I am not make, I, I haven't made these folders. Lightroom is creating these for me. I think that's the easiest way to import your photos and have them be organized on your drive. And then I'm going to show you how to import them or rather organize them in the Lightroom. It is crucial every time that you import that you make sure they go to the right spot. If you send them to the wrong spot, that's how you get your catalog all wonky and how you get photos that are lost and you get confused and you get frustrated. Make sure every single time you click on this raw folder, that is where your photos are going to import to. It's going to make things so much easier. Your life is going to be so much better when you do that. Click import when you're done. That's how you import photos every single time. Now, when you're in Lightroom, a lot of people I notice use these folders, which I think is not the best way to do it. If you use folders, uh, you can simply open up your portable hard drive, open raw. Now you can select photos based on the date. Now this is nice, but the problem for me and my photography, I photograph locations. I'm not so focused on the date. I couldn't tell you what I did on August 13th or where I was. So let's say I was trying to find a photo at a particular location. I'm going to spend a lot of time scrolling through here trying to figure out like what day I was at that location on. Now, if you shoot portraits or something like that, you could potentially manually import your photos and call it like, let's, like, let's say you do weddings, you could call it uh, whatever the name of the couple that you were photographing was, and then you could easily click through on folders. But if you do any kind of photography that's like location-based, or if um, maybe you take photos of like your kids or whatever, use collections. Now, I'm going to show you how to use collections. These are going to be unique to Lightroom. Um, so I'm not going to use folders. And definitely whatever you do, do not create more folders in these folders when you're importing um, already to folders to begin with, because you're just going to make things more and more complicated. So you're going to use collections. Now, there's a little bit to learn about collections, but it's actually pretty simple. You've got collection sets, you've got collections, then you have smart collections. I'm going to explain all three to you right now. You can see editing finished files and other is a collection set. YouTube right now is a collection. A collection set holds other collections. A collection holds photos. So the way that I have mine organized, which if you're a landscape photographer, which I know a lot of you guys watch my channel are, this is how I would recommend sorting your photos. So I've got my editing folder. I'm going to open that up. You can see I have multiple different collections within the editing folder. So I've unsorted, which is where I throw my photos as soon as I import them. I just go up to this previous import box, select all the photos there, drop them in the unsorted. That's just where I have my stuff that I haven't messed with. I haven't touched. Uh, I just have it sitting there so I can go through and adjust it or I can edit it. I can delete it, whatever. If you got unsorted, I have working files where I have some files that I've either started working on, ones that I've finished, but I want to review. Um, that all lives right here. Review is a smart collection. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Uh, I'm going to come back to it. Now, the big thing as a landscape photographer is this finished files box. Finished files is perfect for me because it allows me to sort things by location. You know, I, maybe I go up to Zion National Park four times this year. I don't want to have to sort through folders and find the date of when I was actually at Zion National Park. I just want to open Utah and I want to click Zion National Park. And here's all of my Zion photos. Works out perfectly. So you can put things by location here in each state, or you can, I mean, you can really organize this however you want. You know, if you were international, you could say United States, and then you could have little subfolders that say Utah, Oregon, Texas, whatever. You can organize this however you want, but point being, I think this is the best way to organize it if you're visiting the same location multiple times over and over again. Because you can have a lot of trips worth of photos. I mean, this is probably the span of 15 trips in the Escalante area. I have it all under one roof. So I think that's the best way to organize your photos. You can simply just click and drag to drop your photos in other 
folders uh, or other collections, I should say. Um, now remember, this is called a collection. And then the bigger ones here that hold everything is a collection set. So under mine, you can see I have finished files and then I have all these states. And then within a lot of the states that I visit a lot, I have more collections. And then some of the states I don't visit as much, I just have a collection that's just sitting out here in the open. I also have an other, which is the same thing. You know, I've got other things, personal photos, commercial work, artwork photos, whatever. Now, it's really easy to create these. All you have to do is click on the plus, click create collection or create smart collection. If I want to create a collection set, I just click that, create a collection set. You can put a collection set inside of a collection set. So it's like having a, uh, I mean, it's like having an organization within an organization. Usually I don't do that, but you can if you want. Now I'm going to uncheck this box. I don't want to put it in a collection set, but I could call this example. It's going to appear just like that. Now you can see within this example, there's nothing in there. Then I can create a collection. I can call this X1 inside of a collection set example. If you want to sync it with Lightroom, you can check that box. If you want to set it as a target collection, you can do that as well here. I'm not going to do either of those, but you can check those boxes. I do want to check the box to have it inside of a collection set. It's going to go inside the example. Now you can see it appears right there. I'm going to create another collection example two. It appears right there. So you can keep creating these, create your own. Then once you have those, you can go into all photographs. You can come up here and you can start picking your photos and dragging them into the box. Now, if you don't want to do it with just one at a time, click on one photo, shift click on the other photo. That'll grab all of the ones in between. You can just drag it over just like that. So it might take you some time, but it is worth it to organize it that way. Now I want to talk very, very briefly about smart collections. Smart collections are really, really cool. Um, there's something that I use a little bit, but not a lot, but it's something that you could certainly use if you are somebody that's maybe really tech savvy or somebody that wants things to be a little more automated. What a smart collection is, is it allows things to automatically be added to a collection based on certain rules. So you could go in here and select like just about anything, but one example that I would think of that I don't use it this way, but you could, have it do a camera serial number and then put in the serial number, which by the way is baked into the metadata of your photos so it knows exactly what camera is taking it. Put in the a serial number of your drone and then title this like drone photos. You can put it inside of a collection set if you want or leave it out. Um, you can also do one the way that I do it. I do usually rating um, and then I do rating is, and let's say rating is three stars. And then you can add stars to your photos. You can add stars by clicking on your photo and then clicking down below, add those stars. Now, the cool thing about it is when you have this, I'll show you my one smart collection that I use is called review. This is where I throw photos that I want to review before I actually publish them. I have it set to one star. So if I go on to my unsorted and I add one star to any of these photos, watch how the review will increase when I add a star. There it's at four. There it's at five. So it's adding them to the smart collection automatically just by increasing the star. So it's just a little more automated way to do things. I can remove the star to remove the photo from review. That's how you use smart collections. Now, lastly, I want to talk about deleting photos because I know you don't want, well, maybe you do, but at least I don't want all of my photos to live forever on my hard drive. So how I delete photos, and you can do this however you want, but one thing you'll notice is if I'm in a collection and I go to delete a photo, all it does is remove it from the collection. It doesn't remove it from the catalog, meaning I still have that photo on my hard drive. It's still taking up space. So if I want to delete a photo, Let's just go in here and let's say I want to delete this photo and I want to delete this photo. You can see what I did is set as rejected. I hit X on the keyboard, puts a X flag and it grays it out. Uh, if you want to undo it, you can hit U to remove the flag or you can hit P to pick, which flags the photo, meaning that it kind of stands out a little bit. You can do this any way you want. You could even do this with a rating system. I like to do it with a flag. So I hit X on the photos that I want to delete. You can then remove them from the collection by hitting delete. Now that doesn't delete them from your hard drive. If when you want to delete them from your hard drive, you go up to all photographs. Now you can see I have some other stuff that I had deleted before that I still hadn't removed from my drive because I wanted to make this video. 
So all of these photos I put X's on, I wanted to, to delete them all. I've got probably a couple hundred sitting here that are just taking up space on my drive. I'm not going to do anything with them. I want to delete them. So like once a month or every so often, once I've X'd quite a few photos, I will go up to library, go to enable filters, then go back down to library, go to filter by flag, do rejected photos only. Now you will only be seeing photos that you've rejected. Now you can command A on Mac, control A on a PC. Then when you hit delete, you will get this that pops up. It's going to say, do you want to remove X amount of photos from Lightroom catalog? Now they give you this nice blue box that just says remove from Lightroom. You want to delete from disk. If you just remove from Lightroom, they're going to be gone out of your catalog, meaning they won't be here in Lightroom, but they'll still be on your disk taking up space, which you probably don't want. So if you are sure that you are ready to get rid of these photos, you would click delete from disk. That is going to remove them from your hard drive. You can now see my all photographs is a lot lower. I've gotten rid of those photos. So that is how you delete your photos. You want to do that every so often. Make sure you do that under catalog, under all photographs, because if you just delete them from collections, they will still be in your catalog. You might want to bookmark this video so that you can go back and then remember how to do that. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope this video is going to help you guys to reduce the clutter and confusion in your Lightroom catalog. Again, remember that there are virtually unlimited ways to organize your catalog. This is just the way that works for me personally. Now, if you have a way that works better for you, again, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to continue to improve your photography with weekly videos here. We'll see you guys next time.